What's up guys, Smalls here with 9.5Mac, and if you're a fan of good ideas, be sure to subscribe to the channel for future content like this. This week, Apple released Beta 5 for iOS 16, iPadOS, and of course, macOS Ventura, so I want to cover some of my favorite new features that have been released for iOS 16, since I did my full top features a while back for Beta 2 and 3, so let's dive in. First up is the lock screen, and particularly the music player on the lock screen. Now you're able to view the album art in full screen by tapping on the picture in the widget, and the background wallpaper will match the color palette of said album art. And if you want to revert back to the regular wall screen wallpaper, you just have to tap on the album art again. And as you can see, there's a little waveform icon in the corner that represents what's going on in the song. So when you hit the pause button or skip a track, you'll see the waveforms go dead. And there isn't a real functional benefit to having this, but I think it's a nice touch. And now there's a slightly different look to scrubbing through different parts of the track. And then in the corner is your airplay menu. So at this point, I've absolutely got zero complaints with the way this lock screen player works and I hope that they leave it the way it is currently. Next up is a feature that everyone has kind of been going crazy over, and by everyone, I mean everyone without an Android phone, and that's the new battery percentage toggle for the battery icon. When you go into the settings, you'll see a toggle called battery percentage, and when you enable it, you'll be able to view the exact battery percentage within the icon at all times, and that's really it. You'll notice that the icon adapts to the lightness or darkness of the UI of whatever application you're currently in, but yeah, that's it. The battery percentage is finally coming to iOS. Woohoo, give it a, give iOS a round of applause. Battery percentage. There's now a new sound for the Find My Device feature. So for example, if you have an Apple Watch and hit the Find My button, you're now gonna hear this sound. I'm not sure what prompted Apple to change this, but the original one's been around for a while now, so I can understand Apple wanting to switch things up. Now, a really useful feature that's been added in beta five is a new option you get when taking a screenshot. Now you'll see an option to copy and delete a screenshot after it's taken and you wanna be done with it. And this is a great way to help eliminate clutter in the photos library and keep the screenshot in your clipboard. Something else I've noticed in recent updates is that the battery life of my Apple Watch has significantly improved. Keep in mind that my Apple Watch is not running any sort of beta software, it's just running the stock Watch OS 8 currently, but the battery life was horrible after installing the first iOS 16 beta, and thankfully the battery performance has more or less gone back to normal, which is definitely nice to see. Now, unfortunately, since installing beta five, I've personally noticed a pretty substantial dip in battery performance on my iPhone itself. It's only been a little over 24 hours, but so far it hasn't been great. Normally by noon, my phone is around 80 or 75% based on my average usage. And I found myself at less than 60% with the same usage. And it's not a huge concern for me personally, just cause I'm always around a charger, but it's definitely disappointing to see. Now, when it comes to general stability, thankfully beta five has been a lot better. Um, quite honestly, beta four was a nightmare. I honestly can't count how many different bugs and glitches I experienced on the iOS beta in particular. The iPad OS beta was pretty smooth for me, but beta four on iOS had constant UI crashes. Certain applications would freeze up for no reason. And a huge one that was super annoying was third party keyboards just locking up after a few characters being typed. I literally couldn't use Gboard when using beta four, which is my primary keyboard of choice. Uh, the phone call UI was also consistently glitchy for me. So Sometimes when getting a phone call, I'd only see the answer and decline buttons and nothing else that you'd normally see on the phone call splash screen. Just a bunch of stuff like that. All of these issues have seemingly gone away with beta five. And so I am happy that all those crazy bugs are gone with for now because it was honestly torture. And a lot of people might just ask why I didn't just switch back to iOS 15. And Honestly, a few features, including visual lookup, have become very incredibly useful to me. And so I'm gonna continue to put myself through this until sometime in September. And one of the main reasons why I can't wait for the full version of iOS 16 to be released to everyone later in the fall is because that's when everyone is gonna actually be using this version of the software as opposed to the beta, which only a small handful of people use. And so everyone's gonna be able to use and take advantage of all the new features like share play and all the new editing and undo send features features for iMessage and everything like that, it's gonna be great. People are gonna be able to do visual lookup and send stickers back and forth to each other. It's gonna be great. But what are your thoughts on this iOS 16 beta so far? Have you experienced any of the issues or major bugs that have been plaguing a lot of users, especially in beta four? And also, do you think iOS 16 is gonna be ready for a full release later this fall? Let us know in the comments down below and be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed and subscribe for future content like this. Thank you guys for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.